It's a beautiful day here in Texas and Hive 3D is printing the first of five casitas in Round Top, about an hour away from Austin. They're on the last day of printing and we're gonna get to see them complete this really ambitious project on their Seabay printer with some extra added steps, which is gonna reduce their cost in a method we haven't seen before on this channel. The key to their cost-effective material is mixing it by hand on site. Ultimately, this is the same effect they're trying to achieve with batch plant mixers, but today it can be achieved by putting the extra effort in and just lifting up a shovel, putting it into a mixer system like that and creating the material that you can print ready immediately. After we see how they manually mixed the material for the first house, we'll see how they brought in a brand new truck they'll be using for the next four, which drastically improved their process. You can see they have the Seabay printer and unlike the last Seabay project we saw in Florida, for this project, everything is printed in place and the elements aren't going to be moved after the print. Here are the five pad sites. They have the rebar already tied into the slab. So the printer will navigate around this and after the print, they'll have additional rebar tied to this and then columns poured in with traditional concrete, giving the building structural integrity with a column that's just like it would be in any other form of traditional construction. The best part of them printing five units is it gives them time to test and figure out what works well and what doesn't. They're really trailblazing here with this material mixing method. I also really appreciate that they're brave enough to have me here on site on an active print day. A lot of teams do not have the confidence for that. The teams that you can trust the most are the ones that aren't afraid to print in front of you, like Hive3D. They're doing a great job, and by the end of these five homes, I'm sure we'll see tremendous improvement from this house to the fifth one. This vantage point, you can see pretty much all of their critical equipment. They have the off-road forklift, then they have the mixing system that they're using to prepare the material. From there, they load it into the Seabay mixer pump system. You also see the operator station for the printer. Then, if you look towards where the printed building is, you can see the white top of the printer sticking out. And besides that, they've got water, they have their materials, and of course, their generator. For the first house, before they got the truck, they were loading the material manually into this rotating drum that would mix up maybe a half yard of material at a time. Then they would put it into the yellow bin loading it into the Seabay mixer by hand, having to stop continuously to mix more material as they go. This was a tremendously painstaking process, and both of these guys were working so hard on these days, it was almost impossible to get an interview with them. Really soon, Hive is gonna be beginning this print, and while we wait, I wanna take a minute to introduce you to Chip, the new mascot and logo for Automate Construction. I made 99 of these t-shirts and 19 hoodies available on the Automate Construction website. You can go check those out right now at the link in the description. Pick one up before they sell out. I tried to price them so that you're not afraid to wear them on a construction site. Get them dirty and send me a picture. Even with a two-man crew, the layers are coming out great. They've made tremendous improvement in the layers they can print from even just the first walls of this house to this last layer now. It's really cool being here today on their final day of printing. Printing at a height is much more challenging than printing at the lower levels because there's so much more pressure needed to get the concrete up to the hose. That means that printing at higher levels is where the clogs and issues tend to occur more. So this is the most challenging part and it's going fantastic. They estimate by mixing their own materials on site, their cost per cubic yard is only $180, which is much cheaper than a lot of the other mixes, which can be well over 300, sometimes over $600 a yard. Now the print is over, all that's left is the cleanup process and they're good to go. The final preventative measure for cracking, they'll spray the freshly printed concrete with some water, which will increase the humidity and decrease the drying rate, which will make it stronger over time. We're back at the Hive 3D print site. They're about to start the last section of the second house of five that they're printing. And they're using a totally different mixing system than before. Instead of having two people manually mix everything in this small orange system, they have this brand new truck, which is gonna be able to follow them on site to every job and make their mixing system a lot easier in bigger volumes of concrete with all kinds of benefits from being able to continue one print for a longer period throughout the day, getting more consistent material and more. We'll talk about the benefits with them and see how the rest of this print goes today. One of the biggest challenges reducing cost on the construction site is labor. And even though 3D printed construction is hoping to reduce the labor on site, a lot of times it's still very hard work. You can see when they were manually mixing the material, they were having to stop and remix material constantly, even though the printer could have continued going if they had the material ready. 
Now that they have the truck, they'll unlock this additional capacity and achieve even more cost effectiveness, advancing the automation on the job site. It's easy to tell by the differences in color how and when they were stopping their print at each day. So here you can see they've got one, two, three, four, five, at least five or six stops. And there they only have two or three. We're just dry running the model to make sure it, it works. Right now I've got a little bit of a problem with the foundation being uneven. The layers will actually even themselves out over time and they'll be perfectly level within like three or four layers. It's not a big deal to smash a layer down. It's a, it's a bigger problem to have a layer that's not you know, uh, a good support for the next one. The second building you guys are printing and you're using a brand new printer. What's different on this project for you guys? Uh, I think with this project and this printer specifically, there's a lot of a lot more personal ownership, um, a lot more problem solving on the fly. So there's a lot of um, thinking on our feet. Uh, not that there wasn't with the, with the other printer, but for this one, it's uh, we solve it or no one does. And so it's been an interesting, interesting turn. So. Yeah, you've got a big company behind you, Seabay, who manufactures the printer, but you don't have Andre Rudenko with you anymore. So you guys are having to carry a lot more of the weight mixing the material yourself. What's that been like? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's been interesting, challenging and rewarding at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's taken us a little while to, to work out all the idiosyncrasies of the material, but uh, now that we're here, um, we feel like it was it was time well spent. Yeah, we started about uh, three hours ago, but we had to stop for uh, an hour or so and mess around with our trucks. So this is probably about uh, it's probably about 45 minutes worth of printing on this section. I mean, you can see the speed's really up pretty high. Anything you can mix dry with it, you can mix. So it just has two bands because it's made for gunite, which doesn't use aggregate. It just uses sand, just like us, because it's a mortar, not a concrete. Uh, so you got an aggregate band and a um, in a cement bin, basically. So if you can think of two two ingredients to put in there, you put it there. And then we can add our additives over at the mixing pump over here, which is a Seabay product, but it has an additive pump. It's a liquid additive pump. We can also add powder additives right in the bin if we want to. One of my favorite parts of filming 3D printed construction projects is seeing the industry evolve. It's so new that we get to see it change and improve right before our very eyes, like this home, which is the first Hive did on this Seabay system where they had to stop and remix their material by hand. They were doing manual mixing and it was really helping them get their material dialed in, but now they have a brand new truck which has tremendously improved their system by automating the mixing process and allowing them to continue printing for far longer than before. That's why on this, this wall system, you see only three breaks or two breaks versus the five or six on the right side. So the Original concept was always to use the truck or some kind of an automated process, but before we did that, we had to actually create the material and figure out like, you know, how much of each ingredient we were going to add and, and get it kind of stabilized. So, so this, this first house, we mostly did uh, mixing with little guys like this and slightly version, bigger versions of this. And what we would do is we'd go shovel a bunch of sand into a bunch of buckets, pour the buckets in here pull some of the uh, cement replacement product out, put that in buckets, pour it in, mix it around, add lime to it until it got dry enough, load it into a telehandler, drive it over, load it into the printer and print. And every time you do this, you know, for a section of this size, you'd maybe get about this much or so, and that was about 30 minutes of mixing. So it really did slow everything down. Uh, just last week, we moved to the volumetric mixer, which is a big expense for us, but uh, it's allowed us to go probably 10 times faster. We can. With that process, we can print one of these little houses in maybe three days, maybe even two. How do you load that thing up? Drive it down to the sand yard. So uh, we're using a pre-dried uh, blasting sand. Uh, it loads 13, you can load with 13 yards of material. That's enough for maybe about a 2,000 square foot house or two 1,000 square foot houses. So you load up 13 yards of sand. Uh, and then the uh, we don't use cement, but the cement bin where we put our uh, cement replacement product uh, you can either pull up super sacks and drop them in there, or you can get that loaded up right at the site as well. 